Today we're gonna to talk about using creatine in menopause. Hey, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and thanks so much for joining me here. Welcome back if you're returning, and welcome if it's your first time to my channel. I'm a functional medicine doctor, registered dietitian, family doctor, and I have worked with women um, in perimenopause and menopause for quite some time in my functional medicine practice here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I also have a blog, perimenopause.help, and I've had this channel for about five years, which I've always covered. I've also covered a lot of other functional medicine topics, including a lot of gut health topics. Um, and so dive into the channel if you haven't, but definitely hit the like, the subscribe, if you like the kind of information I'm providing here, and share this out if you feel like anybody would benefit from what we're talking about today that you know. So creatine is a popular supplement that has been recommended in perimenopause and menopause, and why is that? So the reason it, it has been touted as a good supplement for this um, stage in our lives and if you want to learn more about perimenopause and menopause definitely check out my channel and my blog there's lots of information out there on on the channel and on the blog about the different stages of perimenopause and then what happens postmenopausally when you've gone a year without a period so most of the buzz is about creatine and menopause so meaning you've gone a year without a period so creatine is a supplement um, and it is uh, beneficial for muscle cells, I and mean, when I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my blog to reference my points here, right? so you don't have to take notes either. You can uh, check that out on the blog, perimenopause.help. So um, it's an amino acid. It's found in muscles, in naturally found in muscles and brain. Um, it's produced in the body from other amino acids, and it's so it's obviously going to be present in um, animal products like meats and eggs and fish. So we do make creatine from other amino acids, as do animals, um, but should you supplement with it? Uh, it has been shown to be beneficial in women postmenopausally, not only for their uh, muscle mass and body composition, but also for brain fog. Um, so there are definitely some reasons to consider it. And so, like I said, it's formed in our tissues already. It's um, it's found in living tissues, it supplies energy for muscular contraction. So when we're working out our muscles, we are you know, using energy and a lot of that can be derived from creatine. So it doesn't mean that you have to be a weightlifter to benefit from creatine, but you should be doing some muscle building exercises in menopause and postmenopause. I've talked about that a lot on my channel in the shorts and the longer videos too, because you are gonna lose muscle mass. So don't just supplement the creatine thinking that's going to build your muscle, but if you want to consider supplementing it, use it as part of your strength building. You don't have to be a heavy weight lifter, but it can definitely work well in combination with strength training and that can help your brain too. So there's a lot of the research has been done with men in creatine because it's, you know, thought of as like a weight lifter kind of supplement, but it's not just for the men, it's just that those are the bigger studies that have been done, but there have been some some smaller studies that have shown it's safe for women and it can be helpful in the postmenopausal period. There's also some small studies that show it didn't change body composition at all. So just like anything, it's it's a gray area, like with supplements, so there's some studies that are gonna show they're beneficial and some that aren't. So it might be something you have to try out on your own. Um, so as I said, with menopause, you do lose muscle mass and you do have some bone loss too, uh, often with osteoporosis and osteopenia be being common postmenopausally. So um, the, like I said, was about creatine, it works with your muscles, it can help your bones, it can help your brain function. So there's a lot of benefits, potential benefits of creatine. Um, it can reduce inflammation also, it can help your mood, um, and then it can help, like I was saying, the body composition. So helping low, uh, in, improve muscle mass and improve bone health. Um, so what is kind of that magic number? Generally between three and five grams of creatine, it comes in monohydrate or HCL. Um, some people say the HCL is better tolerated. I find the monohydrate is, is good, um, but you do want to avoid, there's gonna be a lot of recommendations out there, mainly from like the male perspective of 
a loading dose, like getting 20 grams of creatine. You're probably going to have some gastrointestinal side effects and some kind of swelling potentially and puffiness if you try to load it like that. You're not going to feel very good usually. So um, I would recommend more sticking with three to five grams. Those are the, that's the dose that's been studied and to be safe for most people in the longest um, over time and like on a daily basis of taking that amount. Um, but if you have impaired kidney function, definitely talk to your doctor. You shouldn't, you shouldn't take creatine if you have impaired kidney function. And you should also monitor your kidney function while on creatine. Yeah, I know there's all these other videos and blogs of, of people saying to take it in menopause and perimenopause and don't worry about it. I'm not saying you should worry about it. I am saying you should check your kidney function. And if your glomerular filtration rate, your GFR goes down, your creatinine rises to a high level, then you want to think about lowering your dose or maybe trying off of the creatine. Maybe it's just not the right choice for you. And I, there are some brands that I like, and I will put them in the description. I like Thorne makes a good creatine. Um, and then there's some other other companies that are making some uh, some good brands that are more targeted towards women and i'll put those in the description too so some of the side effects oh something to think about also is that you it, it's better when you put it with warm water or like coffee or tea usually like a decaf version of those um it can mix up into a smoothie and that's usually fine but if you're trying to mix it with cold water it's not really going to mix very well and you might have some upset stomach after that uh so what have I not covered? Oh yeah, so those are some of the side effects. You can have upset stomach. Um, when I took it, I did have some gas and bloating. I had some swelling in my face. I didn't really like it for myself, but I'm going to give it another try. But I've had patients with, I have this um, body composition monitor here in my office and I've had patients, even those that were younger in their early thirties, um, do very well with their muscle mass and that's all they did. Well, they were working out too, but they added creatine and their muscle mass got much more profound as far as not like bulky, you know, but they, they were able to build muscle mass where they hadn't been before. And when you have more muscle, your tissue is more metabolically active, your basal metabolic rate or how your body burns calories gets better and more efficient and you can lose weight easier and lose fat easier. So I have seen a lot of benefits from it. It's just for me, I have a sensitive gut and, and it did cause me some, some GI distress and I didn't overtake it. I didn't take those huge doses like we were talking about here. So muscle cramps and then temporary rises in blood pressure. That's another thing I want you to keep track of is if you're going to take creatine, talk to your doctor, make sure you don't have a high uncontrolled blood pressure. And if you have a tendency towards high blood pressure, definitely have that checked and have your kidney function checked because this idea that it's perfect for every woman in menopause is, is not accurate. You know, you do have to have a good relationship with your healthcare provider and know that it's safe for you. It's not affecting your labs in any negative way because kidney function can deteriorate in background just for various reasons, not necessarily just because of creatine or anything. And high blood pressure can happen in the background and we don't know what's happening because it's more silent until it starts to create problems. So just kind of a warning. And it's like that with a lot of other supplements. Keep an eye on your vital signs, how you feel, what your labs look like, and if and keep track of what you've done differently, what you've added. And if that creatine or whatever supplement it might be or diet change or medicine it might be, that might be the culprit. So be a good detective when it comes to your health and have a good partner as a healthcare provider, ha have a, a good team. Um, but definitely take an eye, keep an eye on your liver, your kidneys. So I didn't mention liver before. Do keep an eye on your liver function. And if you have a tendency towards an impaired liver function, probably not a good choice, the creatine. And then keep the uh, an eye on your blood pressure and keep the amount that you're taking between that three and five grams or maybe even a little bit less. And it's great if you have access to something like an in-body, which I have in my office and a lot of gyms will have them or like Orange Theory or places like that. And keep an eye on your muscle mass. You might see some great benefits from creatine and you could see some brain fog and mood and brain health benefits from it too. But again, keep in mind, some people it's good for, some people it's not, just like anything. So thanks so much for watching today. If you like this, hit the like, um, hit the subscribe button, share this out, and I will see you in the next video. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for being here.